So what have we got here, then? A portable harmonium. OK. I believe it's about 100 years old. And it's been in my family for about that time. My father, who's very, very musical, had six brothers and one sister. They all lived in Stepney, right. the East End of London. Mm -hmm. And this is the 1920s. And at Christmas, they used to carry this portable harmonium and sing and play in the streets, and have a bit of a knees up. And everybody in the family had their own song to sing. They yeah. would come on and do a turn. Right. And uh, the last time I remembered it was my Uncle Bob playing Silent Night very badly. <laughs> I know, huge derision from the rest of the family. Yeah. So how does it work then? Because I've, I've never seen one of these before. Does it lift up? Does yes, it, this, this you hold whole it? thing lifts up. And uh, you can see where the damage is. Oh, yeah, I can see what's going on there. That is broken, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. OK. I don't know how this works with getting the bellows up. Perhaps you could... Tell yeah, me, well, Dave. these are foot pedals and they are actually also the bellows. So oh. you you pump them in this fashion. Yes. And effectively what happens is the, the air that they produce is channeled up the legs. The yes. legs are actually hollow and then it's put into the main body of the yes. of the machine. And then obviously you play onto the keyboard. keyboard. And um yes. But they, they were built like this so that they could be portable. Yeah. And um, they were used mainly by missionaries. Really? And um, this appears to be a French-built instrument. They were made in the 1800s onwards, sort of oh, thing. All oh, right. How does it stay up? Well, I've discovered recently the secret of, of this piece of wood. OK. Right, but you can push these in between I'm with you. there, <laughs> and hopefully, keep your fingers crossed, it'll <laughs> it'll stay up. Yes. Oh, that is well small. I do like that. <laughs> and now this is the tricky bit. I've had fun doing that on my own. I can tell you, <laughs> trying to get. Ooh, mind okay. your hands. That's it. Yeah, we'll have it singing again. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you for bringing us in. Thank you very right. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Lovely to meet you. Wonderful. Right. You take Thank care you. now. Thank you. Bye. 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 Now that is nice. I think you've got your work cut out on this I one. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep me busy. All right. Cool. Well, let's get this to your bench then. Great. All right. Well, it would be lovely to to be able to play it and. It really does mean such a lot to me to get it restored um, because my dad was such an important instrument to him. Um, it would be just really great to have it repaired and working again. Well, the first thing we do is separate the lower section from the upper section and remove the bellows and the legs. Not that they need a lot of stripping, they're already falling to pieces. <laughs> the leather is very badly damaged, but the wooden parts seem to be in reasonable condition. We need to remake some little parts. Because of the age of the instrument, the screws are rusted in solid. So I use my trusty soldering iron and I just give it a few seconds of heat. Effectively what happens is you're actually expanding the screw that cracks the rust and then that allows you to just gently turn the screw out. I suppose the enjoyable bit is you are literally in most of these cases the first person to have seen it since it left the factory a hundred years ago. Sometimes you find pencil marks, sometimes the, the manufacturer has signed their name inside it. Sometimes, if you're very lucky, you find a date. I've found the occasional rude comment in some of them. <laughs> um, so you never know. You never know quite what you're going to find. Oh, there we go. 